Nikola Jokic is the best in the world. Uh, a lot of us have known this. Most of us have known this. I have known this. Uh, he tricked us after game two. Uh, well, not all of us. Some of us. Some of, some of the takes that, that were being thrown out after game two were insane. Uh, they did not. I, I wasn't saying his MVPs were fraudulent or anything. I'm a Nuggets fan. I, would, I wouldn't say that anyways, even if they were. But um, I saw his MVPs were fraudulent. I saw that the Nuggets championship was fraudulent. I saw the all the NBA Twitter stuff, you know, like obviously not most people thought that but it, there were a decent amount of people saying that and uh tonight he he emptied the clip uh the nuggets, the nuggets really needed this one you know uh i believe i saw 84 percent of people who win game five when the series is tied 2-2 win the series and the nuggets needed to win this one tonight and they did they they ended up winning 112 to 97 it was close for a lot of it, but it never felt particularly close, at least to me. And yeah, it, it was an insane game to watch, especially from Jokic. Uh, Aaron Gordon played pretty well. KCP played very well. Murray was underwhelming for most of the game, but played all right towards the end of it. Uh, and Christian Brown was really good as well. So let's let's hop into it, shall we? Uh, Jokic, 40 points, 13 assists. Seven rebounds, zero turnovers. 15 of 22 from the field, two of three from three, eight of nine from the free throw line. Let's let's chat, right? So Jokic is the first player in NBA history, or second player in NBA history, with 40 points, 10 assists, and no turnovers in the playoff game. The first was Chris Paul back in 2018. And uh, he was dominant tonight. He made Rudy Gobert look like someone who just didn't have any effect on, on defensive end of the court. And he is the defensive player of the year four times. And he just didn't matter to Yoke at all tonight. Not, not a single time did he seem bothered by Gobert. He was hitting scoop hooks over him. He, okay. Some people are like, oh no, he can't he's not that good because he can't do a tween has he splash like i know that that's like ball don't stop stuff but you know let's let's run with that narrative he did it tonight uh at in the fourth quarter to really like ice the game uh there was a, a mini run by denver and part of the the run was a Jokic and a shot clock lakers ptsd sort of shot where he legit went tween hezzy splash he he hit a, a tween hezzy step back and it, it was nothing but bottoms so he can do it all and I'm, I'm gonna get a crazy takeoff and you can feel free to tell me how wrong i am in the comments because you know tell, tell me i'm wrong it, it, explain to me why i'm wrong uh Jokic is the best offensive player of all time it's him curry braun or mike it's one of those four and i think Jokic is the most complete player of those four and that's why I would put him number one. Also, because let's be, if we're being honest, it's also because I'm a Nuggets fan. I, I will own that. I will 100% own that. But also, you know, he, he's in that conversation at the very least. Even if you don't give it to him, he's in that conversation, right? He is a, a probably a top five offensive player of all time at the very least, because I can't think of three better than him or four better than him. I can think of maybe three if you go Braun, Curry, Michael Jordan. I can understand that, you know. But yeah, let's let's talk about the other the other players cuz Jokic was was just fantastic. Uh, you know, passing clinic, scoring clinic, uh, did everything you could have possibly asked of a player tonight uh, and you know, was good on the defensive end as well. His defense has really improved as the series has gone on. It it's just he's really flipped the the switch in the narrative on how good he has been in the playoffs. Like, you know, people were putting him and Luca in the same conversations of like, Hey, they're not performing up to conversations. Uh, Jokic responds with this sort of game, Luca, be it, he is injured, but you know, he's still playing. So if we're going to use that card for Embiid, we're going to use it for Luca as well. And he hasn't been that good in, in the Thunder series. He's averaged 22, 9, and 8 on like four, 39, 26, 77 splits, I think. Either way. 
Jamal, this game was was largely bad for most of this game. Uh, I believe he started one for seven from the field for two points. And then, I mean, in the second half, he was pretty all right. Uh, finished with 16 points, seven to 14 from the field. Uh, but it, he wasn't like the engine like he was in games three and four. Uh, it was fine, though, you know, because they had KCP shoot six of eight from the field. 16 points, four or five from three. Finally, some regression to the mean for KCP. He has largely been struggling in the postseason. Uh, I believe he was shooting under 30% from three before this game. I'm sure that'll change after this one. And he was excellent in this one. No notes. Uh, he hit his threes. He defended really well. Had four, uh, had a steal, four assists, five rebounds. Uh, to go on top of that, I, I swear he had more than one steal, though. Like, I don't think the box score does him justice on how often he was, like, digging effectively. He was getting into, you know... Uh, Minnesota played a lot of lineups with Kyle Anderson and Rudy Gobert in this one. And, like, Jaden McDaniels. And you can't play those three at the same time. A lot of the reason they were playing those three at the same time was because of uh, foul trouble. Nas Reed got into foul trouble early uh, three in the first quarter, in the first half, I think cat got into foul trouble and also knocked knees with KCP uh, during the second quarter. So he was out for some of the game, but you still couldn't real. you can't like run that sort of lineup. You know, Kyle Anderson uh, was a negative four in 16 minutes. That's does not do. It, it doesn't tell the story of how bad he was. Uh, Rudy Gobert was seven of seven in this game, eighteen and eleven. He didn't have a good game. If you just look at the box score, it'll seem like he had a good game. He didn't. He was like, could he fumbled the ball a lot? There were multiple times where he just rolled and the Nuggets ignored him, so they could double Ant, they could double, you know, Cat. They they helped off Rudy like he wasn't a factor and he largely wasn't on the offensive end in this game he was really really poor on the offensive end uh so was Ant Ant had a bad game he had 18 points but he shot 5 of 15 from the field uh 1 of 5 from 3 he did have 9 assists but it was bad he didn't establish himself to be a like a threat like he was in, in the rest of the series and in the sun series, you know, he did have a one bad game in the sun series. I believe it was game two and he had had one bad game in this series so far. And it was this one, uh, the last two games, he hasn't been as effective as he was in the first three or no, no game three. He wasn't as effective game four. He had the 44 piece. Um, but you know, he's had a couple of games where he wasn't as effective, but largely he has been, you know, a very good, like, great, great, great player of the series. But tonight he just wasn't that. And if Ant isn't carrying the offense, the Nuggets or the Timberwolves offense looks very suspect. The spacing of a lineup with Kyle Anderson, Jaden McDaniels, Rudy Gobert, and then like Na and Ant is really bad. That's three people you don't really need to worry about them shooting. Rudy is an absolute non-shooter. Kyle Anderson is an absolute non-shooter. He he was spacing in the corner in this one, and he shot twenty four percent from three in the regular season from the corner. He's not a, he's not a four spacer. And then Jaden McDaniel's has not hit his threes this series at all. One of four in this one, and he also got in foul trouble. Only ended up playing thirty minutes because of it. Like Monte Morris was probably the best. Uh, bench player in this one uh, him or Nas Nas was solid at times but also had four fouls he missed uh, you know five shots three of eight from the field he did almost spark a bit of a run for the Wolves in the fourth quarter but uh, the Nuggets answered back this time they, they didn't just roll over so you know Cat had a better game than he did last game not a very high bar but also, still, I wouldn't call it a good game, even though it was 23-6-4, and four, 10 of 19 from the field, 2 of 5 from 3. He had a lot of dumb fouls. He was really poor defensively. Like, this, this game just felt like the Wolves sort of rolling over a little bit. Not like they, they wanted to roll over. It just felt like the Nuggets had finally been like, okay, we're the better team. They, they took 
two games in Minnesota. It was it was two two. You could kind of make the case that it was close. And then the Nuggets just said, "We're the better team. We are the better team, and you can't do anything about it." And they snatched their chain, <laughs> and uh, they they didn't look back. And Jokic said, "Hey, I'm the best in the world." He earned his MVP. You know it. He established himself as someone who will be in some very very uncomfortable all time conversations if if the Nuggets take it all the way this year, and. You know, like, there's a reason Shaq doesn't want him to win. There's a reason Shaq doesn't want him to win MVP. It's because, you know, he doesn't want him to pass him all time. And and we might be getting to that point soon. Not quite yet. Not quite yet. Well, maybe. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I, I would personally have him probably above Shaq, but also I understand not having him above Shaq. I, I understand that perspective. You can also tell me why I'm wrong in the comments below. But, yeah, like, MPJ played really poorly this this game. He's, like, the one nugget that I have kind of nothing good to say about his performance in this one. He did have a couple of nice blocks defensively, but also had a lot of boneheaded plays. Uh, two of ten from the field, two of seven from three. The couple of threes he made were big shots, but, like, he had... Uh, one specific play that stood out as like particularly boneheaded to me was uh, it, they were up 12 and Nas Re- uh, they were up 14 Nas Reed came down the lane had a big dunk and then they it was cut to 12 they go to inbound it and MPJ just inbounds it right to Cat basically and Cat gets a easy layup and then it's cut to 10 and that could have turned really sour really quick but it didn't the Nuggets closed with Christian Brown today because of that. They also closed with him yes, uh, last game as well, I believe. And I can't blame them. Uh, Christian Brown has been very, very good in the in this series. Uh, Ten points, four of eight from the field for him tonight, one of two from three. That, that three he hit was a step back, by the way. Uh, that was when I knew the game was officially over because if Christian Brown is hitting step back threes, yeah, that, that's cooked, buddy. Uh, five rebounds, two assists. Steal two blocks. He did a very good job on on Ant tonight. I think a lot of Ant was just Ant missing, but Christian Brown definitely got, you know, good defense tonight. Bothered him. Uh, Got the matchup when he was in the game a lot. And he did a great job with it. So that's the Nuggets game. The Nuggets uh, play again on Thursday. And, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens from there. But... If you guys liked this video, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, let me know how I can improve the videos. Let me know how how I can keep them good because uh, hopefully you think they're good. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not using highlights in this one just because I wanted to get this one out quick. But uh, yeah, have a good rest of your day, uh, night, whenever you're watching this. See ya.